A butterfly remains tied to this tree here at Logan and Danforth, remembering Reese Fallon, shot and killed last year, July 22nd. She was out with a group of friends celebrating a birthday that night alongside 18 year old Samantha Price, who was also shot but survived. I sat down with her parents to see how she's doing one year later. We were notified by a doctor who happened to be in a restaurant where Samantha, who had just been shot, managed to scramble there and she was taking care of Samantha, was explaining to us what had happened and so we're kind of in a semi sleep, you know, shock. I, what, what are you talking about? A gunman opening fire on the busy Danforth streets. Samantha, shot in the hip, was among 13 injured in the chaos. Two others fatally wounded, her friend Reese Fallon and 10-year-old Juliana Kozis. We're all grieving the loss of their daughters. That's, when I look comparatively, we were lucky that Samantha's injury was such that she could recover physically and we think psychologically, you know, I think that's still it's something you live with, so you're never quite sure. It's kind of crazy that this whole event has brought us together in a unique way, and um, we're all dealing with the incident differently. For Samantha, it meant starting over, leaving Toronto for university. But in an unfortunate series of events, a return home mid-June to celebrate the Raptors championship became another test of trust. <laughs> As gunshots rang out, Samantha among the thousands packed into Nathan Phillips Square. We get the call from Samantha saying, we think uh, there's something going on here. Uh, what should I do? Where do I go? Samantha ushered to safety inside City Hall that day. But those events bringing back painful memories of that evening on the Danforth. For her parents, they say it's what's next that will determine if history will repeat itself. At the center of it all is what they call an unremarkable story. A story of someone struggling with mental illness who was able to obtain a gun. Last February, we, we made a call. We asked the government to ban assault weapons and ban handguns from private ownership. The current ownership model which has seen guns grow you know, exponentially in Canada in terms of ownership, while other countries have, have taken steps to prevent that, you know, now puts us in a position where there's more crime due to guns, and le illegal certainly, but legal um, from legal sources as well, and that's what, we, that's what we concluded, and that's why we're making this call. So we would like to see that as an outcome of our experience and to prevent other people from going through that. Ken and Claire say they will continue to be a support system for those who were affected by what happened here along the Danforth that night. Later this month, they'll be in attendance for the launch of a new charitable organization launched by the Kozis family in honor of their daughter, Juliana. Melanie Ng, City News.